Hello, Helen here. Welcome to my Crafty Adventure channel. If you're a new viewer here, you're very welcome. And if you're returning and seen my channel before, then you're very welcome and I love having you. Today it is Monday. I've got the day off today. Um, so I thought I'd do a journal while I could. Um, it's a very cold windy day here in New Zealand. Um, it's the 21st, is it? 22nd of April. And it's a very blustery cold day, although we've got a lovely blue sky. So I'll show you um, some, you've possibly already seen some footage of how it's coming into autumn and all the trees are turning or have lost their leaves completely and um, starting to get very cold. It's, well, 13 degrees today, um, starting to get cold at mornings and nights. So yes, autumn, winter is coming here on the, in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, today I have got some um, finished objects. I've got one, two, three, four, five finished objects. And I have just a couple of whips today. And then I've also got um, an acquisition to show you at the end. So let's get started with my finishes. I'm looking a little bit skew off the camera. So, so my first finish is a sewing one and I don't know whether it was a couple of journals ago I was showing you that I was making all these quilted um, blocks. So I finished the, it's just a little wee quilt I was making it for um, my sewing machine. It's just got some fine polka dots fabric on the back. Um, I was making it to go over my sewing machine but it's ended up being a little bit too wide and a fraction too long so it doesn't look right on the um, sewing machine. So I've just got it hanging over the back of my chair in my craft room. So. Um, it's, go it's going to use and I just love all the pretty soft pastel colours and a little binding around it. So I'm really happy with that and I'm glad it's finished. Now last time, um, my last journal, I mentioned that I was starting to feel a little bit overwhelmed with how many projects I had going how many whips I had going and I decided I was going to work two days on each project through the week and then the weekends, the weekend hopefully I'd get a third day in if time allowed and jobs allowed. Um, so that worked really well last month and I ended up finishing all three um, whips that I had plus I ended up doing an extra one and finishing it so um, you haven't even seen the cast on for that so I'll show you that at the end but um, so the first thing I did was my um, some self-striping socks now last um, journal I talked about a bit of a saga with socks this is the second pair of socks I've ever knitted the first pair I did in two by two rib and they worked out fine because if they were a little bit big they kind of cinched in quite nicely and fitted me well. The second pair I'd, I can't show you because I've frogged them now and um, I'll show you what I'm doing with the wool um, in my whip section but um, I knitted them uh, just a vanilla pattern that I got off the internet which was cuff down and I knitted both of them at the same time down to just past the, the heel and then ended up just knitting the rest ready to go get down to the toe with a foot and I kept looking at them thinking they look really big and when I tried them on they were huge like <laughs> baggy baggy there was there's no way I was going to be able to wear them so um, 
I was feeling a bit disheartened about that so I ended up um, I had to go to an appointment in, at our nearest city Nelson and um, I went into a yarn shop and was talking to the lady when I selected this this yarn um, I was telling her how I'd knitted my second pair and they ended up way too big and she she ended up giving me a pattern and suggesting um, that I start from the toe and work my way so that I can measure my foot as I go and make sure that it's the right length before I even start the heel and um, I thought that was really good advice. I can't show you the pattern, it's just a complete vanilla, just a normal vanilla pattern. Um, she, it's one that she's created and gives away if you're buying sock yarn. So it was very nice of her and um, I took her advice and um, the wool that I bought was a Cruci self striping yarn because I'd been fascinated with all the ones I was seeing on YouTube and loved how the the stripes come out and things just with one ball of wool so I bought that and took her advice and started with the toe um, and worked my way up and it was a much much better pattern um, it fits beautifully um, I really enjoyed enjoyed the process um, I did a German short row wrap, wrap and turn is it called or turn and wrap heel and then I did just quite a short leg um, and a one by one cuff um, because it's nice and stretchy because I've got quite big um, calves so they need to stretch quite a bit um, and I'm really happy with them they fit beautifully I'll be able to wear them now I didn't want to wear them before I'd shown you on the podcast um, they're not exact exactly the same um, they worked out pretty much the same until I got to this stripe here and I don't know how whether I can show you easily but this pink and mauve stripe is much bigger than this one this one turned out to be a bit of a mix and so um, once I got to that part there was different proportions so their sisters not twins um, and the heels turned out to be a different place for both so the heels are different and then and it, so as you can see the tops are different as well so from that point on they went different but you can see they're a pair I love them I think the patterning's really cool the way the self striping yarn works so yeah that's my second pair of socks I'm really happy with them the second project I was working on was a that was also a saga last last journal I had all sorts of problems and I think it was I just wasn't in the right headspace um, I'm not sure why um, there's lots of family things going on and yeah I was just tired by the evenings and sit down and I'd want some just sort of very straightforward knitting or crocheting and the patterns I was doing weren't that really so um, this is the Moonlit Shawl by Sandra Paul and it's a crochet pattern and I bought this beautiful yarn called Peach Fuzz um, on an online store and um, love the colour um, the, f the wool was from Roxy Fibres and it's um, on a Twinkle Toes base, four ply sock and it's got a gold sparkle th all the way through it I don't know whether the camera will pick that up but it's really, yeah. and you can see on the camera it's got all these little dark spots all through the yarn I'm not sure why that is because it's supposed to just be one colour and I don't know whether 
maybe the dyer when they were dying it had some residue left from a darker dye or something previously and it's just got all these little spots all over it but I think the overall effect is really lovely still um, so I started I started on the 17th of March and I finished on the 3rd of April and I had it's a very simple pattern and it was me not the pattern but you inc you start you do the um, crochet just one stitch all the way through backwards forwards backwards forwards and increase one side so it's straight on one side and increases on the other but I had all sorts of problems with the increase like um, the increase section it told you how many stitches you had to how many um, yeah stitches across you had and the first attempt I had not enough so I was obviously not picking up this hidden chain on the edge and I also um, was getting my wrong and right sides confused so I was also shaping this side sometimes and it was looking really wonky so I, I frogged it and started again and I took more notice of picking up the hidden little chain stitch on the, every second row and I got to the top and I had too many stitches and, and but the shaping was a bit better because I put a little marker on it showing the right side so that solved that problem so I still wasn't happy so I frogged it again right from the back to the beginning again and this time I wrote down on a, a pad each row that's in the pattern and how many stitches I needed to have at the end of that row and um, it worked far better I got to the top I had the right amount of stitches I carried on did all the rest all good I, I'd done the main part of it then one night I sat down I think it was the night before I did the journal um, I had to you have this really lovely lacy border and I started off and I did two or three rows and that next morning I woke um, I, I sat down just before I did my podcast and was looking at it thinking looking at the pattern thinking it says to do I won't say too much but it said to do trebles and doubles and I had printed out the pattern um, was either the UK the US version instead of the UK version and I usually use the UK terms I think it was and um, I'd somehow interpreted in my head that trebles were doubles how I knew them but then it also said so it said to do some trebles and some doubles but I'd also interpreted the doubles as doubles instead of that they should have been singles so instead of doing singles and doubles in different places to do the lace edge I had been doing doubles and doubles so the pattern wasn't turning out it was very holy it was just looked weird and I knew I'd done something wrong and when I worked that out I thought oh so I frogged those three rows that I'd done and I quickly um, sat down and I did two or three rows of the right you know um, doubles and trebles or singles and doubles however whether you're US or UK and was go busily going along and I looked at it and thought oh no and I'd done the straight edge instead of and also the wrong side instead of the right side so I frogged it again so I finally got the border done and I was playing chicken with the yarn because um, it had said that it was it took 400 meters I think and the yarn that I had was 400 meters and I thought oh yeah I'll be all right but as I got closer and closer to the end of the um, 
the little lace border I was getting less and less yarn and I was thinking oh because it takes you know the the further round you get the longer it takes to get round the row and the more yarn you're using because it's getting bigger all the time and I got to the second to last row which was doing all these pretty scallops and I thought well that's good and then by the time I got to the end I had this tiny little I haven't got it here with me I should have brought it down but tiny little ball it was literally about this big and I still had one row which was to go around and do single crochets around the, the, the entire edging and I looked at it and I thought well I'm not going to buy another whole skein of yarn just to do one row on this um, and I quite like the little scallop just on its own so I decided to stop there and I wouldn't buy more yarn to finish it. I could have actually done the last two rows maybe in a, a contrast colour like a cream or something but I decided I was happy with that and all my sagas and things I was really happy to have finished it. Um, really happy with it. I think it's going to be lovely as a um, wrap around sort of scarf to wear if I'm wearing just a black top or you know just to lift it with a bit of colour. The colour comes a little bit more pinky on screen but it's actually um, very peachy, um, really pretty colour. Um, super soft, it's just beautiful yarn so I'm happy, totally happy with that and I um, think I'll make the pattern again sometime and I'll do hopefully have enough yarn to do the, the full two in rows and finish it properly next time but yep that's another finish and I'm really happy with that um, and the third project I had been working on was um, a poncho that I'd bought the um, it was by on the channel as bag a day her channel and she called it a poncho with poncho with sleeves but I decided I wasn't going to do the sleeves so I bought this um, cotton I think it's cotton acrylic mix although well, it's looking like it's got three three different yarns in it um, I can't read it it's in a different language um, and it was on Etsy and it's my melodies and I don't think she has um, anything on Etsy at the moment so I'll link another company that's got just about identical type and identical mixes of cakes so it was an ombre cake um, and I just decided I would keep going until I was pretty much finished with the, the cake and so it goes from a sort of silvery grey into a blue the blending's really beautiful the way it's done into a mauve into a stronger sort of mauve and then it finishes with a sort of dusky pink at the end so it's a um, really pretty shell type poncho it's got a central column down the middle that's done slightly differently but then the, all the rest of the stitches are done the same it's done on a really big um, crochet hook I think it was a five or a 5.5 or something like that so it's done very loosely and I think it'll be really lovely as one of those in between season where you just need a little bit of extra warmth when you're coming and going from somewhere but I'm really pleased with that it's really really pretty colors and I've actually had it on the go for quite a while I got down to about this stage and then stop for quite a while but I'm really pleased to have finished it and now I can start wearing it so really happy with that so that's my third finish and the last one is a finish 
a start and a finish. I hadn't even, um, excuse me, let me pick up my glasses. Sorry. Um, I hadn't even cast it on at that stage um, when I did my last. I hadn't cast it on um, at the stage of my last journal, but I've cast it on and finished it. Now it's the St Helen Stewart Peace and Wild Things shawl. Isn't that beautiful? It's got some just plain stocking it, and then it's got beautiful lace edging around it. I love the softness and the delicacy of it. So really beautiful. And I'd bought some yarn. Um, online it was a Malabrigo Ultimate Sock Yarn and it was the 689 Valentina and here it is I've washed and blocked it I haven't sewn off ends yet I must do that but I've decided to give it to my mother for Mother's Day she really loves mauves and purples even though it on here it's actually looking like it might be a bit more pink than mauve but it's really beautiful um, and I held it together with a mohair lace one strand that I bought from I think it was Temu or Aliexpress or something just to see what their mohair was like so it's a mohair acrylic mix um, and it's just made it beautifully I don't know whether you can see that this got a slight halo really soft just beautiful I'm hoping she'll like it she wears a lot of mauves and purples and things or um, black tops with you know different coloured skirts and things so I think it'll be really nice to wrap around a neck when she's going, walk, she walks everywhere so um, when she's walking down the street to do some errands hopefully she will really like wearing that so I'll be giving that to her in a couple of weeks when it's Mother's Day and hope she, hopefully she'll like it. Um, I tried a new bind off um, the pattern called for, um, I better, better not say too much, but So it was a knit one, knit two, then um, you swap them around on the needles and put the stitch over so um, it's, it's quite a lovely little bind off and it stays nice and loose so that when you blocked it you, you know it stretched where it needed to stretch and things so really happy with that, it's just beautiful and hopefully she'll love it too. So that's my finishes this time round. Um, just excuse me while I grab my two whips. So the first one is the socks, the dratted yarn that I used for the socks um, that I ended up completely frogging because they were too big. So I decided I didn't want to just do vanilla socks again with that same wool. Um, so I ended up going online and I'd seen a few people that had finished these socks and loved the pattern and thought it looked like it just gave a little bit of texture so I ended up getting the drippity droppity socks by Kay from Baker Bears Bakery Bears um, Kay Jones and it's turned out to be a really lovely pattern really easy to do the texture so I've finished one sock so the yarn was um, a let me just get my little journal. Um, 
It was a Kiwiana Kiwi Yarn A uh, socks. Um, it's colours called In the Mood. And I bought it from um, a little yarn store down in Christchurch called Fl Get Flocked. Um, I bought that and the yarn for the first pair of socks I did. And then I ended up getting some little minis from a place called Pink Flamingo, which is um, the ladies based in Blenheim, which is just a little bit two hour drive away from us. So I got a little mixed pack of minis because I didn't have any sort of spare colours for doing, I wanted to do cuff and toe. Now this comes out very blue looking, but it's actually a lovely, almost Cadbury purple. My camera always does really weird things with purple colours. And there's purple in the yarn too, which look, again looks blue on screen. But um, I did a 2x2 two two rib. I, this one I did do down because that's how the pattern showed. And then the texture pattern of the drippity drop is just really beautiful. Can't quite see it with the variegated yarn, but... Um, it just adds a bit of texture to the whole sock. And then I did a slip um, heel flap and gusset, like the pattern says. Did the foot, which is half and half stockinette and the drip she drop it pattern. And then I did her Kay Jones's umbrella toe, which I really, really like. It's really easy to do. It looks really good. So that's my first one. And I have got... still got quite a bit of yarn left and that's what I've got for the um, little mini and I've got to the stage where I've done the cuff I've done the foot I've done the heel the slipped stitch heel turn gusset and I'm just on to the foot part now so I've got more or less here. So I've got that much to do. So that shouldn't take too long, um, but I've put it aside because I've got a couple of other, well, I've got one other um, project on the go and doing a few other things. So that's my first whip. And my second whip is I bought this beautiful yarn it's looking a bit <laughs> soft now, but um, this beautiful yarn online in a on a sale platform called Trade Me that we have here in New Zealand, which is a bit like um, eBay. Um, and the lady does. I found her when I was buying some heirloom flower seeds. I was looking up on that and saw that she dyed yarn, and her yarn is really reasonable. It's about $22 for 100 grams. This is DK, but she also does some four-ply four sock as well. Um, this colour is called Opal, and I just thought it was just beautiful. It's got pinks and really pops of lime green, and it's got purples and various different greens in it. It's just beautiful. So I wanted to do one more hat. I've just done one recently and I wanted to just do a plain 2x2 two two rib. So I bought um, got this pattern off Ravelry and it's called Ribby, Ribby Hat by Tini or Tini. And it's a very simple hat just with all the ribs coming in to the centre crown. So this one again, I seem to be on a bit of a kick. Um, I'm doing some mohair lace and that together, which is making quite a chunky, but I'm, that's how it's knitting up. Isn't that beautiful? It's just got such beautiful colours in it. Really lovely dyeing. So yes, two by two rib 
I've got to do 70 rows before I start doing the decreases and I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, almost 50 done. So I've got about 20 more rows to do and then I can start doing the shaping um, so that you can have it turned up. So it'll be turned up at the bottom. But I'm really loving it. It's really mindless um, knitting to do in front of TV. I did it yes, it's quite a bit of it last night when um, all my kids came around for family tea that they do on a Sunday night and I just sat there and knitted away. It was just lovely. Really good mindless knitting and I'm so happy with the colours and how it's coming up. Just absolutely beautiful. So that's my other project that I'm working on at the moment. And I've got another couple of ideas for a couple of cast-ons, but I'll show you that next, next month, um, deciding on what I do actually start. Um, so that's all my whips at the moment, other than I haven't done any more on my mitered square blanket, um, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, but... I plan to get back into that a little bit probably in this next month and do a little bit more of that. So let's get on to the acquisitions in the next part. So for the acquisitions, um, I'd been seeing how different people were, were um, yarn dyeing and some of the beautiful colours and I really love the variegated or hand-painted yarns that are available and thought I'd really love to have a go at it and I saw that um, Ashford's who um, is a company that does all sorts of spinning wheels and looms and anything related to yarn they have a whole lot of the you know more winders and swifts and things like that but they also um, have their own yarn um, collection and they also do and sell um, yarn dyes and this dyeing kit so I bought the Ashford's dye kit and thought that was a really good place to start um, so it has in the kit it has the instructions and a whole lot of information on um, colour wheel and complementary colours and sec you know primary secondary colours, all the things you need to know if you're going to start colouring. And they also have a card in there with all the different colour dyes that they hold. They have their own line of acid dyes, um, some really pretty colours, and then they. And the kit also came with a booklet on all the uh, products that they sell. So there's just a really comprehensive um, booklet on all the dye colours that they have, all the different looms that they have, um, different wheels, different drum carders. If you've done weaving or spinning or anything related to those kind of yarn crafts you'll probably have heard of Ashford's I would imagine and then in the kit came two hanks 100 gram hanks of four ply sock yarn and four different dyes so there's sapphire coal um, fuchsia and bright yellow and so with those colours, you should be able to mix just about most colours that you want. So um, I ended up as extra buying some 8-ply um, undyed yarn. As I thought, if I broke it up into um, either 20 or 10 gram lots, I could have a real play with different colour combinations different techniques, learn how to, you know, different dyeing techniques change the look of how your end yarn turns out um, and then all the 
trials that I did I could incorporate into my mitered square blanket so um, and I thought that would then give me quite a variety for each of the squares that I'm doing so um, I've started just by doing two my first one was this just using the fuchsia and I background coloured the yarn and then I ended up sprinkling a whole lot of the powder on top to do some speckles but I got a little bit carried away I think less is more in this case um, and you can see there's quite a lot of the darker um, fuchsia colour which is its neat colour um, I still use it and I think it'll still knit up really nicely but um, that was a lesson in less is more which um, I'll continue to do and then the second one I bought I ended up again it looks blue but it's actually purple a really pretty purple um, and it's um, I base dyed it a really pale mauve and then I went in with some darker and more diluted dye and just did some patches of colour and it's ended up turning out very variegated and really really pretty so I'm really happy with that so I'm going to continue doing that with the eight ply that I've bought so I'll keep you posted with what I end up coming up with over the next month um, I've got some leave um, from work so I'll have a good play in my time off and show you what I can come up with um, doing my experimenting, trying different colours, mixing some colours, all that kind of thing and I'm really looking forward to it so um, thank you for joining me today um, I will be back next month and show you some hopefully some new whips and maybe a finish or two um, and I appreciate you spending your time with me this this morning or when at whatever time you're watching this um, and I'll see you next time bye for now <laughs>